If you want to make what professionals make, then you do not want to miss this one. Guys, welcome to the Mr. Bubbles channel where we dish out awesome pressure washing business advice to beginners. And man, I got an awesome episode for you guys today. We're going to be talking about something that, uh, I'll be honest with you guys, it's been kind of burning a hole in my mind, if you will. And it is this. So I've had this thought that I've been wanting to talk to you guys about. And it's, um, it's essentially the idea is, why is it that some companies, big companies, they're, they're big and why some companies remain small? So, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about this, you know, what's the transition? What is it that happens that makes you go from, from a, like a small guy to a, to a big company? What is it that the big companies are doing that, for example, the little guy is not? So, you know, um, it, it's something that, and it's funny because, so in the last couple of weeks, you guys, you guys have been sending me some amazing ideas for for different episodes that you want to see and guys man i can't wait to get some of these uh ideas out you guys are extremely very creative with uh with your all your ideas that you want um you know for different videos and stuff and i want to get to all of them but this is definitely one of those that i've been thinking a lot a lot about and i also you guys know this i'm huge into networking man guys i talk to a lot of people and some of the things here on this list are like from my own personal experiences and some of them I've gathered from friends and people I know with who run uh, big companies like I know about I would say about a dozen guys in my area that run million multi-million dollar companies one of those guys has a eight million dollar a year HVAC company so anyway guys I got five five things on this one for you let's jump right into this so Number one, one of the things that I've noticed that big companies do that the little guy does not do is that the big guys, their reputation is their priority, okay? You've often heard me say this, that marketing is the physical action that you do to get a customer. An example of marketing might be, for example, you, you, know, you put out your, um, your uh, bandit signs, right? That's a form of marketing. Your six by nines, your five arounds. You guys have heard me almost in every single one of my videos mention the five arounds. Well, that's marketing. But marketing is the thing that you do to get you a customer, the action that you take. But branding is the thing that you do to build a reputation in your marketplace. Now, now this is something that is so important to me, guys, that I am actually in the next, uh, I think, I can't remember what episode it is, but it's, it's like a week or two away. I am doing a, a branding episode. I'm going to do the top 10 ways to brand your company, how you build reputation for your company, right? So for the purpose of, of, of this video, I just want you guys to understand that there's a difference between marketing and there's a difference between branding. So I'll give you guys a great example. So one of the companies that I mentioned, the HVAC company, this year, right now, the year that we're in, man, that, man, they are focused, guys. That company, all of their people down, you know, from their leadership, like their managers, all the way to the technicians out in the field, their, their staff people, like the people who answer the phone, everyone in that company is super hyper-focused this year on getting to a thousand five-star reviews. They're right at the round, uh, like the 800 mark. They're like 780, around, right around there. But the bottom line is they're going to be the first company in that, in that industry here in our local area that's going to have over a thousand five-star reviews. Now, does that help them? Is that marketing? No, of course not. That's more branding because now people look them up and they go, oh, wow, look how many companies, look how many people are leaving reviews. They must really love this company. That helps you build your reputation in a marketplace more than actual the physical act of getting a customer. You guys got it, got the difference there. So I want you guys, as you grow on this journey, as you grow, you know, your your pressure washing business, and you guys become more mature entrepreneurs, you need to go slowly into that. You you need to turn all your marketing into your branding. I'll give you guys an example of bad, really, really bad marketing. So there's a guy in my area, 
he's putting out like five, maybe 600, 600 guys uh, of these bandit signs. And the bandit signs, that's, guys, this is all it says. It says pressure washing, any house, 150 bucks and a phone number. That's marketing. That's not branding because we don't know who that is. There's no name associated with it. There's no Google My Business. There's no website. There's no nothing, guys. No nothing. That's exactly what you don't want to do. That's a perfect example of bad marketing and also bad branding. You guys got that? That's the opposite of building a reputation. You guys do not want to make that mistake. You want to focus on things that will help you build a better reputation in the marketplace guys this is going to be a slow burning process but you got to make sure that you guys grow as you grow on this journey because guys guess what this 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 is what i'm giving you is like a hack right like a like a blueprint for success for you to be able to understand what are the elements that i'm doing that's keeping you where i am and these guys what are they doing different from me so make sure you're paying really 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 close attention to uh to building your reputation and here's the last thing i'm going to say about this guys so as you grow right and you start to uh, become a little bit bigger you're going to notice real quickly that marketing is very expensive guys like very very expensive you can very quickly drop 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars a month like it's nothing to get a customer. Like branding, marketing can get really expensive, but usually branding is inexpensive. So, like for example, you know, a neighbor that calls you because they saw your crew next door and then they 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 saw the awesome, awesome job that you did, that's free basically because you're right there. That didn't cost you anything if, for example, you have your vehicles wrapped. That's why also as you grow, you want to make sure that you're focused on branding, on building your reputation in a marketplace and getting customers that way because it's less expensive. You guys got that? That's very important. Okay. Number two on our list is something. Oh my God. I've talked about this, guys. Customer service driven. Every big company I know, that is their focus, their purpose is to take care of their customers. Because you understand that that's, guys, that, like, what is a company without, without its clientele? And I, and I just mentioned this, getting a customer is expensive. So you need to make sure that you're taking care of the customers that you have. Now, I'll put over here for you guys on this side, uh, because I cannot remember what episode it was, but I did a Marcus, um, uh, a customer service episode okay you guys are seeing here you can search it out but the bottom line is this there's four essential elements okay like the basics that you need to master when we're talking about customer service and it's this number one you need to make sure you're you're, you're answering your phone you're picking up your phone number two you need to make sure that you're arriving on time number three you need to make sure that you're polite be friendly to people and then finally quality service and, and and the one thing i want to highlight here the importance of making sure that you pick up the phone guys uh, let me tell you a, a quick story here so uh there's a real estate agent that that um we have a mr bubbles and every year we do 50 to 75 customers for this one real estate agent now the reason why i bring this up it was either last year or before that maybe the year before that I actually got a chance to pressure wash her home because she was putting her home in a market. So I got, you know, to, to, um, to talking to her and then, you know, this is how I found out the origin story of how she became, you know, such a, a, a big fan of Mr. Bubbles. And what it was, was she was coming out of a meeting and she needed to call somebody to clean, uh, in that case, in that time, it was 18 houses that she had like HOA violations. So anyway, so at 1145 at night. She calls our company, Mr. Bubbles, and guess what? Suzanne, our office manager, picked up the phone, did her pitch. The woman was mind blown that there was somebody 11.45 at night picking up the phone. She's just, she's never seen that before. So that's one of the reasons, that's actually the main reason why we, we uh, while she went with us. And guys, since then, oh my God, we've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of houses. 
for that one customer. Now, imagine it's a very rare situation that you're going to pick up the phone at 11.45 a night, but this is just to showcase the, the impact you will have when you are picking up the phone because you guys got to remember this, right? There's a lot of competition out there, a lot of great companies, and what you want to do is you want to differentiate yourself from the other guy. And then the, the last thing I'll say about that is this. Guys, my first four years, I didn't have anybody answering the phone for me, right? And I've mentioned this before. I used Jill's office, okay? Now, Jill's office, I'll put up here. As a matter of fact, you know what, guys? Let me do a quick screen share so I can show you Jill's office website and explain to you what Jill's office is. Now, what you're seeing on screen is their website, but Jill's office is a VA company. What is VA? It stands for Virtual assistant the way it works guys is you give jill's office a script that they're going to answer the phone and they're going to say exactly what you tell them to exactly what they what you tell them to say so they're going to pick up the phone as if as if they are you now like i was saying guys you know my first four years i used jill's office and you know it's very cost effective guys you you should call i'll put the link right down below in this video in the description for you guys to reach out to jill's office because we're talking a couple hundred bucks a month okay it's not that expensive and you can hire that virtual assistant to pick up the phone for you it's actually what i did for my first four years and then it just got to a point I mean uh, mr bubbles we're getting 40 to 60 phone calls every day so we need a full we, we needed a full-time person answering the phone but the bottom line is this guys i highly highly recommend jill's office if you're having a problem in that area and remember guys focus first on the four basic uh elements of uh, uh having a, a, a you know awesome customer service because guys if you're mastering that i mean you're already doing pretty good okay so the bottom line is guys just make sure that you stay focused. All of the big guys, all of the multi-million dollar companies, they're awesome, absolutely awesome at customer service. Number three on our list, again, something I've mentioned on the Mr. Bubbles channel, focused on systems, okay? Now, uh, I'm going to suggest one of my episodes to you guys. If you have not done so already, you need to make sure that you watch episode 108, 108. Now, in that episode, I talk about my house washing system. Because guess what, guys? We're not just doing, we're not going out in the field and doing things any kind of way. Like, there is a systematic way that we do everything at Mr. Bubbles. From how we pick up the phone, to how we sell, to how we send an estimate, to how we close, to how our people uh, take money out in the field, you know, accept money out in the field. Like, one of the things that I'm going to mention to you guys is this. Like, one of the things that we do is when we send a technician to a house, we notify the customer via text, hey, our technician's on his way, he's on route, and he's going to be there in the next 15 minutes. Wow, not only is that great customer service, right? But also, also, it's part of our system. Now, the good news, the good news here is this. Over the period of about three or four months, uh, in the next like 40 to 60 episodes for you guys, man, I'm going to sprinkle in a good like 20 to 30, mm, about 20 episodes where we're going to be talking about the topic of systems, right? Because if you guys remember, we you know we just finished our truck build series. Our next series is going to be episode 140 to 150. I'm going to show you guys the system that we have for downstreaming exactly how we make our chemical how we actually do the, the the house wash all the way to the end of the system which is asking the customer for the five star review the bottom line is this as you grow on this journey guys you're going to need a a, a type of situation that you're going to implement hence the word system that it's going to make it basically what it is is you're going to always have the same result that's what a system does for you you guys got that like imagine i show up to a house and i don't have a system and i just do it any kind of way sometimes a house is going to look out good sometimes it's not sometimes plants will die sometimes they won't sometimes i'll get a five-star review sometimes i'll get a one-star review that's what happens when you don't have a system in place 
you have a system for how you make sure that the plants don't die, that the windows don't look bad, that the customer gives you a five-star review. So make sure, of course, you guys, like 95% of you guys that watch my channel are brand spanking new to the industry, and that's okay because you can follow my system. Then after you have about three to five years out in the field, you're going to develop some of your own systems. So I highly recommend you piggyback off of mine first. And then at least that gives you like a, like a good jumping off point. So the bottom line guys is I've noticed that all the big multi, 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 multi million dollar companies, they're all super, super, super focused on developing systems in every area, like almost like automating, right? You guys heard of the word automation, like they're automating every single part of their of their of their uh, of their company and, and not only is it because it's more cost effective but also you are securing a high level of quality when you're doing that you guys understand that so make sure that you are system focused number four on our list is something that hits home to me like it hits me where i live and that is outside of the box thinkers guys if you're the type of person that you can only color inside of the box and you're awesome at following directions, but you, you can't really like look at a situation and be a good problem solver. Ah, man. Wow. Like, I don't know that this business is for you because as you grow on any entrepreneur journey, you're going to have to come up with things along the way that you haven't encountered before so you're going to have to be able to reach into a place of creativity or research things you have to be different than every, everyone else around you you guys ever well no you have heard this because i've mentioned this saying before if you want to make what nobody else makes you have to do what nobody else is doing you guys got that let me repeat that real quick think about it if you want to make what nobody else is making you got to do what nobody else is doing. And that's why, for example, I'm coaching you guys up on how to, how to get customers, how to do a sales pitch, how to optimize your Google My Business, right? I'm giving you guys great ideas because you're going to be able to do things that your competitors will not be able to do. And then therefore, you're going to make more money. That's how all of this works. So I'm going to give you guys, for example, a couple great ideas, okay? Here you go. So one of the things that I am doing in my area that nobody else is doing, I just started this this past month. So we targeted four churches, okay? Now these churches, between the four of them, they have over 5,000 members. So we went to a local church and we said, hey, look, we noticed your building could use a little bit of TLC. There's some mold growing on the side. And what we're going to do for you is we're going we're gonna to do your building on a house. No charge. No charge for you guys. And we're going to do the, the entrance there where the, the members go, you know, go, go through the doors and stuff. Again, no charge. We're going to take care of the building once a year. And, and we're going to do the walkway as needed, maybe two, three times per year. Again, I'm doing this with no charge. The only thing I ask in every case, it wasn't with the, the pastor. It was with the, like a church administrator. I said, look, the only thing I ask, I have this sandwich sign. I show him a picture and I say, I want to put this at the entrance there to stay there. So, you know, maybe I can pick up some work with your members. They all agree to this. And my sandwich sign literally just says, this building is being maintained by Mr. Bubbles phone number website. Guys, guess what? I've already picked up 60, 60, 60 customers. We're six, seven weeks into the, into the, into the, into the season, right? So my season started the first week of March. We're already at the second week of April. Guys, six, seven weeks into the, into the new, the, the new season, I've already picked up 60 customers just from that one, one form of marketing. You got, you guys get what I'm saying here? Like, I'm not going to do what everyone in my market is doing because that's going to give me the result of everybody else. I have to do above and beyond. I have to think of new ways. And I just, guys, I just gave you a great idea. Now, I'm going to give you a, a great idea that I recently just learned from somebody else. Now, you know how I mentioned that HVAC company? 
guys, they're doing something that I, as soon as I heard about it, I was like, oh my God, that is such an awesome idea. And we have people working on it right now, but I'm going to give you guys this idea. So one of the, remember I told you that we send a text to people when they're on their way? Well, this company, this uh, $8 million company, they do the same thing, except they send them a bio of the driver. So for example, I read one of theirs and it had the, it had the person's picture. So like, let's say a fictitious name like Mike. So what they would do is they say, hey, our technician Mike is on his way. And then they would send them a bio, a small bio of Mike has the, his, his, um, his picture, and then he'll say, you know, how long he's been with the company, what his strengths are, what his area of expertise is. And I remember this, this was such an awesome line. At the very end it says, when Mike is not working with us, he can be found at your local dog park, walking his black lab, China. I was like, wow, they are really, really tugging at people's heartstrings with that one, guys, because everyone loves dogs. And they're like, wow, this guy, Mike, he sounds like, he sounds like a guy I want to get to know. You see what a great outside of the box thinking idea that is? I mean, I was like, wow, I need to jump on that ASAP. As a matter of fact, I already got people working on it. I already got people working on it. And I want you to get your people working on it or you get working on it. The bottom line, guys, is, you know, you got to copy success. This is what a multi-million dollar company is doing. This is what I want to do as well. I didn't come up with that idea. But see, that's what this is. That, that, that's the power of learning from other people. I want to be a $10 million a year company. They're almost a $10 million a year company. Why wouldn't I do what they're doing? You guys get what I'm saying here? Because again, guys, this is a blueprint. It is a hack for you to get to the next level. So you need to make sure, guys, that you're an outside of the box thinkers. And I, the last thing I'm gonna say about that is this. So I did an episode again, for the life of me, don't ask me, I can't remember what episode, you can search it out, where I talked about the 12 skill sets needed for you to survive in the pressure washing industry, right? And one of them, one of those skill sets, if you guys remember correctly, we talked about is that you're going to have to become a great problem solver. And that's where thinking outside of the box is really, really going to help you because things happen out there in the field. And if you're a person who's developing the ability to think of outside the box, to be a problem solver, man, you got it. You're going, you're going very, very far. It won't be long before you're making six figures and what in, in, and very soon after that, seven figures out there because people like that are not, not a dime a dozen. Next on my list, okay, lastly on my list, I should say, I've noticed something, and this is true of myself, but all of these people that I know that run highly successful companies is that they are all highly skilled craftsmen. Guys, you have to be a master of your craft in order for you to make a lot of money. That's just the bottom line. You know, when I, when I talk to you guys about customer service, and the very, uh, the, the four things that we talked about, the last one was quality work. Guess what? You could answer the phone and be the nicest dude in the world and everybody loves you. Well, you go out and you kill somebody's plants or you mess up their house or you nuke their car with your solution. Guess what? It doesn't, none of, none of the other stuff matters, right? You have to be a master. You have to understand what it is that you're doing out there in the field. You know, um, how are people going to, you know, uh, for example, recommend you to their friends, family members, if you're, if you're not awesome at what you do? Mediocrity, nobody promotes mediocrity, guys. Nobody. You ever been to a restaurant and the food sucked? And you, you left and you were like, oh man, that was a bad choice. Oh, did you recommend that place to somebody? So when you go and you do a crappy job and you leave these terrible lines on people's driveways, you think they're going to recommend you to their neighbor? Of course not. That's a, that's a no brainer. Okay. So obviously now I'm talking about the skill that you need to acquire to do the job effectively out in the field. But guys, there's so many things that you need to be proficient on. Like, uh, you know, here in my area, there's a guy that I know, you know, because of, of, uh, of networking, he has a $12 million a year. Uh, what is that thing called? Uh, lawn care. He has a lawn care. Guys, he mows. I mean, it's a, it's a tremendous number. He mows 
6,000 lawns, residential lawns a week. And that I've heard through the grapevine because I network with some people that are managers of his. Uh, I've heard through the grapevine that that's only 40% of, because they're, they're structured like 60% commercial, 40% residential, but they mow 6,000 lawns a week. That's a lot of lawns. Um, and man, but the dude is awesome sauce when it comes to selling. Like that's his, like he is highly skilled salesperson. So, you know, there's all these skills. So when I'm not, so when I'm talking about being skilled at your craft, I'm not just talking about, man, you wash the best house in the whole world. No, I'm saying you have to be a, a, an effective, a highly effective technician, but you got to know how to sell. You got to know how to market and administration. I mean, what if you run a six figure Let's say you run a $600,000 a year pressure washing business, but you absolutely suck at managing your money and you spend $800,000. Well, you just went $200,000 in debt. You see what I'm saying? So like financial management, that's a skill. Sales, that's a skill. Uh, marketing, branding, uh, the skill of dealing with people, customer service, the list goes on. So in order for you to make that leap, from going from a little guy to a big guy, it all depends on how many skills you stack on top of each other. At the end of the day, guys, that's all it is. Your pay is nothing but a reflection of your skills. So if your money's not right yet, it's because your skills are not right yet. You guys got that? You need to get your skills right and your money is going to be gravy. That's all I got for you guys today. Man, uh, man, coming off this, uh, by the way, I wanted to mention this, guys. Man, coming off this series, that, the recent series that we did, the truck build series, man, you guys have been sending me a lot of good positive feedback on that. I appreciate that. Uh, make sure you guys are hitting that like button and the share button and, uh, and making comments and whatnot because we have a commitment with each other that you guys are going to help me get those, uh, those videos up to a, a certain amount of comments and likes and whatnot. But uh, man, I've already started, guys. I've already started ordering all of the things. I'm already eyeballing trailers and whatnot uh, for us to do an enclosed trailer build. My goal is to get that done. Uh, before the end of the summer for you guys man i can't wait because i've already showed you guys a utility trailer i've shown you guys a um a, a truck build then i'm going to show you guys an enclosed and then who knows th where the sky can go from there maybe we'll do a box truck together i mean who knows but the bottom line is man i love this community that we're building because we're helping each other and you guys are man you know you, you guys are awesome because you guys are actually taking this information and you're taking it out in the field and you're applying it to your own life and your own business and it's making an impact for you and that that right there is the purpose has always and will always continue to be the purpose of the mr bubbles channel is to help you grow your pressure washing business so oh i wanted to mention this as well make sure you tune into the next episode because guys in the very next episode after this one uh which is coming out tomorrow or by the time you hear this it's probably out already in the uh in the inner zones um but uh i'm actually doing a um, house and gutter combo i don't have too many of those on the channel so make sure you tune into that one and as always, guys, make sure you email me. Some of you guys are still lollygagging, still lollygagging on your pricing. Make sure you, you email me for your pricing guidelines. It's got your downstreaming, soft washing, gutter cleaning, uh, roof washing pricing. It's a, it's a jumping off point, guys. This is like basically, you know, so you at least have knowledge, like a solid foundation to build from when it comes to pricing because I, I guarantee it doesn't matter where you live in, on, on, in, this, in this country if you guide yourself by that man you're, you're going to do pretty well for yourself if, you, uh, if you're charging the prices like of that blueprint so highly recommend that for you guys but, uh, but yeah thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one bubbles out <laughs>